Okay, the first part of this video, I want to show you how to get the mass of an object. So I'm going to put the mass up on the plate here. All of the weights need to be back up against the plate. And when we're wanting to get the mass, we take the largest weight here, and we're going to move it, and it has to be latched into the little notches. When we stop it, it has to be latched so the little arrow points to exactly one of the numbers. So I'm going to move it to that one. That tells me that I went down too far on this one because, see, this is going down below the line. It's not level. So I'm going to back this one up one notch. So now I've latched it down. The next one that I'm going to move is the back one, the middle weight. And I want to go down until it is... That one made it go too far, so I'm going to back it up one notch. Then I like to use my pencil or a, something small to move the front one because if you use just your uh, finger, sometimes it moves it too much. So I'm going to move the very small weight. This one moves it one gram at a time actually a tenth of the gram, until I get it to the level point. So we're going to keep moving it down until it's level. And so right over here I should see the level mark. I'm kind of looking at this backwards, so I'm going to keep moving it just a little bit more until it levels out. So I want to bring it back until it's just level. So I'm going to go back just a little bit right there. Check and make sure on the front side. Mm, nope, that's not quite far enough. A little bit more. That should be about right. So whenever we're reading them, we add the three weights together. 100 on this one, 20, plus, and it's not quite on seven, it's six point, and we count each one of these as a point because it's a tenth of a gram. So 100, 20, six, point, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's 126.8. Let me zoom in on that and I'll let you see that. If I can get that to zoom in. Okay. All right. So that's the way you would level it. Next, I'm going to be giving you a, a measurement and I want you to write that on your document, answer document there. to use the uh, monocular microscope. This is the one with the one eyepiece. We do have some binocular which are used for larger specimens. So I want to show you how to use that and to be able to see um, very tiny objects. First thing we want to do is turn on the microscope. The buttons are on the back of both types of microscopes. So we have the eyepiece has a magnification of 10. So everything is going to be multiplied by 10 by this eyepiece alone. Then we have three different objectives. One that magnifies by 4 times. So 4 times 10 is 40. 10 times 10 is 100. And the largest one, the largest objective, is 40 times. But we multiply it times 10, which gives us a 400 magnification. So we've got the light on, we've got our stage plank, uh, stage clips <clears throat> covering our um, 
slide so that we can keep it in place and it won't fall off or anything. We always start with the four power magnification, the four times. So it's a red one on these. The light is on and I'm going to look through it and I'm going to get it in focus until I can see the specimen in focus at four power. Then I rotate the objectives around until I get the 10 power in place. At that point, I can use my fine adjustment here because I've used my coarse adjustment. Now I'm going to use my fine adjustment just to get it into uh, focus a little bit more for that one. Let me move this over just a little bit. We also have some things under here where we can turn down the light. I'm going to flip, turn this around so you can see. So if it's too bright coming through there, we can turn it down and make it a little dimmer so that we can see our specimen. So this adjusts the light. The light. This little switch underneath here is called the diaphragm. And the diaphragm opens and closes the amount of light. So we can also adjust with that. But probably adjusting with this little... Um, light button is going to be our best bet. So you want to adjust it until you can see it the best possible and it's in focus. So that is the way you use it. Fine adjustment, coarse adjustment. I've got my light switch back here. This is the arm. This is the way I would carry it if I was carrying it to another location. One hand under the bottom, one holding the arm. The little clips that hold the slide in place are called stage clips. This is our stage that we're putting the slide on. I have three objectives and they have different powers of magnification. example on the board. I know that it's kind of reflecting backwards. Maybe I can flip it. But um, what I wanted to show you was we have, if we have our markings on the side of our graduated cylinder, whenever we put the liquid in it, a lot of times it'll have this curve. You always want to read the bottom of the curve right here where I have the red, the red line right here. So this wouldn't actually be up here close to six. It's actually a little bit below the five. So this would be like 4.75. So if you'll read the bottom of this, that's the meniscus. And that's spelled M-E-N-I-S-C-U-S, -S, meniscus. So um, hopefully that will help in reading the bottom, meniscus.